recent time. It is our 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 reaping time. You have cried and sown so many tears. Tears of sorrow, tears of pain, tears of loneliness. But now is our time to reap in joy. It is our time to reap in joy. Does anybody know that the joy of the Lord is our strength? Yes, God. We're going to reap. We thank God today. And for those who are on the, on the online church today, we thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for joining us today online. And for those who are in the building today, we say God bless you today. Come on, put y'all hands together one more time and give God praise. Again, we welcome you to Spread in the Word Worship Center. We welcome you to Spread in the Word Worship Center. We welcome you to Spread in the Word Worship Center. It's one right behind the Leslie there. We welcome you to Spread in the Word Worship Center. I'm going to get out of the way. I am here to receive the word of God today. Yeah. I am here to, I, 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 it wouldn't be right if we, didn't, if we didn't give God a little praise though, right? That's right. So, so I, I, I have to come up here and, and I'm gonna give God praise because I'm telling you a whole year being locked in the building and only just being you and me and my wife and a camera. Hey, if it's 10 people, if it's 3 people, if it's 5 people, if it's 500, 5,000, whatever it is, I'm just glad yes, Lord. to be able to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. And so we are praising God every week. We're giving God honor every week. And we're turning up the temperature and our praise every week. Yes. Amen. Before we hear the word of God on today. We want to just share with you our, our core values here at Spreading the Word. We have four core values, right? Four core values that are wrapped around four simple but powerful words. And those words are we are passionate about. We are passionate about. Can you all who are here with me just say we are passionate about? We are passionate about. Right, we are passionate about. We are passionate about our purpose. We're passionate about loving. We're passionate about giving. And we're passionate about learning. That's why we're here. That's why you online watching. Whether you're watching live, whether you're watching replay, whether you're watching it on YouTube, whether you're watching it on Facebook. That's why we're here. To learn. We are a disciple culture. That's why we came. That's why you're running on the treadmill with me right now. That's why you're walking around the park with me. That's why you're watching me in your beauty shop. That's why you're watching at home and you're casting it onto your TV. That's why it's in your ears when you're walking around the grocery store. That's why we sit here in the church building physically today. That's why we're here. Because we're passionate about learning. And so as we're celebrating 20 years as a church, as we're celebrating 20 years as a church, Last year, we could not have a celebration, because of a physical celebration. This year, we said we wanted to. Just spend, We didn't want to have any extra night services and afternoon services and everything. So all of my colleagues in the gospel, we thank God for you. We thank God for you that you may be in your own churches today. But we thank God for your well wishes. And we definitely want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers who may be here and those who may be watching online later. We say Happy Father's Day to you all. Amen. But before we get into the Word of God, we want to again, we want to again thank God for this opportunity that He has given us to be able to have a church to be able to come together and gather in. And 
the building that we are in today and the building we have been in for the last few months is only because of covenant thank you worship team this man of God who is going to speak the word of God today over our lives and share the word of God with us on today he has shown himself from the time that I've met him in Applebee's <laughs> in Calumet City the Applebee's that ain't even there no more from the first day that I met him until this day he has shown himself to be a friend a brother a covenant partner and a supporter of me my wife my church and we are thankful that this man of God he opened up his arms of love to us and he, he, between him and, and Adam I'm going to say his twin Adam <laughs> they, they, are, they have shown so much love and concern for me and they said, Apostle, you don't have to do all the other stuff you've been doing. Just come here. Just come here and open up the door for us to be able to come here and to worship the Lord. Yes. Why? You see, I, I'm, I'm walking, I'm on the end of transition. I'm on the end of transition. But transition plays a part in all parts of our life. There's going in, there's the middle part, and there's the ending part. And God is allowing us to be in our ending part of transition as we're getting ready to walk into our greater. And so I'm thankful today for to be able to have someone that will walk that walk with me. Honor the anointing on my life. And honor even the struggle that I may have. Because if somebody can be with you in your struggle, they can be with you in your success. Is that right, somebody? Right. Amen. So let's all stand on our feet. I'm going to get out of this preaching man's way. Yes, Lord. As we bring and present to some, introduce the other, to others, the senior pastor of the Grace Church of Chicago. Somebody say Grace Nation. We are going to draw on you. We're not going to drag on you today. Oh, yes. We're going to pull on you. Shout us, preach us, prophesy to us. Do whatever it is that you feel led to do so. So y'all put your hands together. Let's receive Pastor Anthony Stephanie. Come on, y'all. Let's give our praise for him as he comes. Father, we come once more again to say thank you. Master, I thank you for this day. Thank you for a day that we have never seen before. But now, God, as we get ready to dive into your riches, I ask that you would allow me to decrease, that you would increase. Anoint these lips of clay, that I can speak with clarity and power under the authority of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we come right now, Lord, just saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for 20 years. We know if it had not been for you, Lord, we don't know where we would be, and we want to tell you thank you right now. And we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say amen. Amen. I know we're still sort of in the pandemic, but look at the neighbor real quickly and just tell them, say neighbor. Amen. Come on, y'all ain't talking. Tell them, say neighbor. Amen. I don't know about you, I don't know about you. but the Lord has been with me. You know what? You got the wrong neighbor. Look at another neighbor and just tell them, say neighbor. I don't know about you, but the Lord has been good to me. If it be good to you, come on and give God some praise. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. 
some praise for our honorees on today. Come on, we can do better than that. 20 years. Apostles Jeff and Regina Holiday. Come on, that's all of them. Amen. I am so glad. Amen. And honor that he will allow me to come share. Amen. Amen. With him on today. Celebrate this great man of God. I don't know about you, but I know one thing, the oil is on his life. Yes, yes. I, I wish I had some oily people in the house that know that the oil we oh, need. I, yes, I wish I had yes, somebody that know oil recognize oil. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes. I say the oil is on their lives. Amen. And so we are indeed glad, amen, to be here, celebrate with this church. Amen. How many y'all thank God? Because when you recognize it ain't your church. I say when you recognize it ain't your church. And you recognize who church it really is. It's God's church. How many know one thing about God? He won't let his church fall. And that's why he told Peter. He said, Peter, that's right. I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. And he says, but what I'm going to do, Peter, I'm going to give you some keys to the church. And whatever you bind on earth, I bind it in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose it in heaven. Amen. Thank God for each of them. Thank God for Pastor Jackson that is here today. Amen. Amen. We honor her. Thank God for each and every one of you. Well, we're going to get into the word. Amen on the day. I want to look at Philippians, the third, uh, third chapter and the 13th verse. Philippians, third chapter, 13th verse. Thank God to all of the men and women of God that are here on the day. We honor you as well. You can say amen when you have it. Amen. I want to look at this in the New Revised Standard Version today. The New Revised Standard Version. Philippians, the third chapter, the 13th verse. Mine might read a little bit different. But it says this, and I, I hope that you catch this, Apostle uh, 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 Holiday and, and, and Apostle uh, Regina Holiday. He says this in. Uh, the New Revised Standard Version. Behold, I do not consider that I made it my own. Yes, yes. Let me say that again. Behold, I do not consider that I have made it my own. Yes, yes. But this one thing I do. Yes, yes. Forgetting what lies behind. Ooh, yes, Lord. And straight forward to what lies Jesus. 
ahead. That's the word. 14 verse says, I press. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all know this scripture. I press yes. on toward the goal yes. for the prize yes. of the heavenly call yes. of God in Christ Jesus. I want to look again. It says at the 14th verse, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. And let the church say amen. amen. I want to talk, you may take your seats. I want to talk about envision the future of expectation. Envision the future of expectation. Family on the day as we are here to celebrate on 20 years, and that is commendable because there are a lot of churches that don't make it a year. I have discovered that now, especially in these days and time, that there are people that have not been called or have not been anointed and appointed for such a time as this. Uh, uh, we have a lot of, amen, the so-called men and women that they call themselves called by God uh -huh. that help, yeah, uh, let me say it like this, uh, fly by nights. Yes. Uh -huh. That river, that river, that river, not only yes. that river, uh -huh, but when things get tough, when things, uh, amen, the struggle comes, the trials come, I have discovered, amen, they have fallen by the wayside. And that's why the scripture said that, amen, for a man to put his hands upon the plow and look back is not fit for the work. But I came to let somebody know that if you continue to press, somebody shall press. If you continue to press in the midst of it, can I tell you, there is a reward on the other side. I need you to understand the day, family, as we are here on the day, uh, that there's two things that I guarantee to us in life. Uh -huh. Once you have been born, can I tell you, there's two things that I guarantee. Uh, the first one is that you will have trouble, trouble, adversities, and trials will come. Uh, can I tell you, storms will arise uh, when you are called by God. How do you know? Because uh, if anybody remember once Jesus was baptized, the Bible says uh, uh -huh, that uh, that was a high moment for Jesus. Uh, is there any witnesses in the house that remember in the scripture, it says once he was baptized by his cousin John, the word of God says uh, that the Trinity showed up uh, in the New Testament. The Bible says the Son was being baptized and the Father, amen, was in heaven that spoke and the Holy Ghost descended like a dove and it said, this is my Son who I am well pleased. But when you turn the page, you find he was led out into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Can I tell you on the day that when you are called by God, there will be some storms and some trials to arise in your life. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because I have come to the conclusion that all good things come from God. But can I tell you real quickly, all bad things go through God. Y'all yes. missed that. Let me say that again. Can I say that one more time? That, can I say that one more time on today? That good things come from God. But can I tell you, bad things have to go through God. Is there anybody remember Job when he said, he said to the saint, have you consider my servant Job? Oh, my God. Uh, uh, he's an upright man. Huh? And the Bible said Job lost everything. Uh, but what did he say? Naked I came into this world and naked shall I return. But even in the midst of my infirmity, blessed be the name of the Lord. Can, can I talk to somebody in here that's been going through a storm, that's been going through a struggle, that has been going through a trial? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? The real DNA of the Holy Spirit is that you can praise God in the midst of your storm because folks can shout when everything is good. Folks can dance when they got money in their pocket. Folks can dance as long as their marriage is going good. But can you dance when all hell has arrived 
in your life. Can you praise God in the midst of it all when your money is funny and your change is strange and your credit ain't fantastic? Can you praise God when the doctors have given you up and the doctors have said, I've done all that I can do? Can you still praise God? Because one thing I found out is that when you praise God in the midst of whatever you're going through, can I tell you what happens? What it means is that you begin to raise him up. If you look at the word praise, you take the P off. It means raise. And I heard in the Bible he said, if I be lifted up, y'all. He said, if I and I be lifted up. I draw man unto thee. Oh, I came to talk to somebody in here that has been facing some infirmities and some trials in your life. Oh, look what happened. Look, 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 look what the scripture is teaching us today. Deals with Philippians, the third chapter, the church of Philippi. So it was the first Christian church. In New York. When you look at the church of Philippi, really when you understand, and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, Christian, uh, uh, it, it was not Paul's desire mm, to go into Europe. Uh, it was not Paul's desire, family. Uh, 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 and the Bible says he had looked at the church and saw. Uh, how they was going through. You find this was his uh, second missionary journey. Yeah. And the Bible says he was a man fellowshipping among the Gentiles. The congregation was developing into a phenomenal fellowship where we find first and we see the initial, catch this apostle uh, Regina Holiday, that woman is also essential to the role of the church. Uh, 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 you see here uh, uh, that the city Philippi was located in ancient Greece. It was the eastern border of Rome. You find here, now Paul have been with them and Paul have observed them. He sees a brighter future. He sees that things will turn around. Because to understand anything about Rome at that time, uh, 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 it was not popular to go to church. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, we love to celebrate uh, the Olympics. We're getting ready for the Olympics, even though it was supposed to happen on last year. They're getting ready for this year. And you know, whenever you go to Rome, one of the places they love to go see is the Colosseum. But really, when you look at the Colosseum, uh, it was not for what we use it for today. But the Colosseum was for entertainment, uh, to criticize, to talk about, uh, to, to, to really ridicule Christians. They would use Christians for entertainment. That's why what you find in the book of Romans, it deals with the criticism and deals with the frustration of the church. Uh -huh. But he lets us know here in Philippi uh -huh. that there is a greater reward mm -hmm. if we continue to stand on the word of God. Uh, he says here in the 13th verse, he says, Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it on my own. Mm. I, I need somebody in here that can understand. Uh, you're not sitting here because of you. Uh, uh, you didn't make it through a pandemic uh, because of your own strength and ability. But is there anybody thank God that God covered you? Look, look at a neighbor and just say, neighbor, I thank God that God covered me. Uh, I thank God that he kept me in. I thank God that it kept me from danger seen and unseen. Uh, is there anybody that can testify in here that God, even in the midst of a pandemic, he's still been good? Uh, yeah, he still have made a way out of no way. 
Yeah, I need you to understand the day uh, that Paul, he's telling us, I didn't make it on my own. Uh, you got so many people that think they're here or their status of what they have is because of what they have done. But is there anybody that can thank God because you recognize uh, uh -huh, if it wasn't for what God has done, catch this, uh, you talk about people even with degrees. I thank God I might have a degree, but I thank God that he gave me the wisdom and knowledge. Uh, I thank God that when it was time for me to pay uh -huh, for my tuition, uh, he made a way. Uh, uh, you do have to understand you did not make it on your own. And, and Apostle, I don't know, you already know uh, you did not make it on your own. Uh, is there anybody that can testify even in the midst of it? Even when people try to lie on you, when people try to talk about you, people try to, amen, to frame you. I wish I had some help in here. Uh, people said that you would never make it. But is there anybody that thank God that even what and said, uh, God said not, not so. Not only, not only did God say not, not so, but I thank God because of two things that God does for us. Can I tell you, I said this on, uh, on Wednesday night, uh, can I tell you two things I thank God that he does for us. Uh, first thing he does, uh, he opened doors uh -huh, that no man can close. And I believe this is a season apostle. Uh huh. And I came to let you know that I believe this is a season that God is going to open some doors uh, that no man can close because of the favor upon your life. Uh, can I speak to this house on the day? Uh, I came to let somebody know God is about to open some doors for you. That man has tried to shut down. Man has tried, amen, to keep you from. But can I tell you, when he opened the door this time, uh, look at a neighbor and tell him, when he opened the door this time, uh, no man can shut. Yeah, yeah, that's number one. But can I give you number two? Because now, not only do you need some doors open, but you need some doors to close. Help us. Help us. I believe in this season, Apostle, that God is getting ready to close some doors. Sometimes he got to close some relationships. Sometimes you got to get fired from that job. Uh, sometimes that friendship don't mean you no good. Can I tell you, not only this is the season that God is going to open doors, but he's going to close some doors. Uh, that no man can open. Because uh, you got to learn sometimes you got to give some things in your life the benediction. And it's not that you're so funny and you're so arrogant. Come on, somebody. It's just that God is just moving me into a different direction. I'm reminded of David. David had to give his friend his brother-in-law mm -hmm. a benediction. My God. Not saying they did not love each other, but the seasons uh -huh. had changed. Oh I, I need to let somebody know in here, uh -huh, to let somebody know that the seasons are getting ready to change. Yes, yes Lord. And, and can I tell you, everybody cannot go with you yes. to where God is trying to take yes. you. Yes. Uh, look here. Paul said, I, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing, this one thing. Yes, I do. I forget, forget. what lies behind. Yes. If you're going to move into where God wants you to be, you got to forget yes. some yes. things. Yes. And if you're going to, amen, move into your expectation, can I tell you, you got to forget some things. He says, I forget what lies behind and straight for what lies ahead. What he's saying, I forget about those things. Some things you got to give amnesia to. Some things you got to forget. Because you know, can I say this? You know we got a thing that we like to say. We'll tell people, I forgive you, but I won't forget. Sometimes you got to let some things go out of your mind uh, so that you can get what God wants you to be. Because if you continue to dwell on it, can I tell you, it'll bring you back into that place. 
bring you back into depression. Bring you back into frustration. And you will move and not be in position where God wants you to be. When you look at the word envision, envision is the image as the future of possibilities. Uh, you have to, in order to believe in envision, you got to visualize it. Mm, you got to visualize it. When you look at visualize, that means, can I say, when you break it down really all the way in the Greek, visualize really comes from vision. You, you, got to, you got to see it. And can I tell you, not just with the physical eyes, uh, but you got to begin to see it in the spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. You got to have vision. And I believe of Hansu, Regina, and Jeff Holiday today, God has given you vision. Uh, when you look at vision, when you look at vision, vision uh -huh, is not a man a noun, but you look at it, it's a verb. Can I tell you, you know what a verb is. Anybody been to school? Verb is a word that's used to describe an action or state. You can I tell you, that means you have to remove, you have to move into what God is calling you to be. Let me tell you this real quickly. I'm almost finished today. Look at what happens. That means that you have to, amen, seek. That's why he says this. In order to have vision, you got to have faith. And can I say this, uh, Apostle, and I say this to your church today, uh, that your church, can I tell the church today, you got to have faith in the vision. In this season, he don't need people. Uh, and Apostle uh, uh, Regina and Jeff Holliday they do not need people uh, that don't have any faith. Amen. And faith just does not believe that you just believe, but you put some action to it. That means you put action to it. That means, look here, that means I'm going to walk with the man and the woman of God. Whatever they ask of me, I'm going to follow. And can I tell you, follow doesn't mean that you have to agree with everything. But when you are a follower, that means I don't care how I feel. It's about kingdom, and it's about the kingdom of God. Yes, yes, Lord. Uh, you got to have vision. If you're going to envision the future, the expectation. Yes, yes. I have three things, and I'm, I'm, out, out, I'm out the door. Number one, vision begins with a concern. Where there's no concern, there is no vision. Uh, vision begins, let me say it again, with a concern. Amen. And I believe that the church is in a critical state. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, they believe in statistics, I believe they said uh, probably about 55 or maybe 65% of the church won't return to the building. There's a concern for the church. There's a concern for ministry. It's not about monetary gain. It's not about what kind of car I drive. It's not about what kind of suit I wear. It's not about what kind of shoe. But it's about people being saved, healed, and delivered. I, I, can I say this? I don't come to church for a fashion show. I, I don't come to church uh-huh, uh-huh, to see who's going to be there. But when I come to church, I come to receive something from God. After all the hell I've been through, oh, I wish I had somebody in here. After all the hell, the, the storms and the struggles I have been through during the week, I need a refresh. I don't have time to play. Vision begins with concern. Number two, vision takes time. People talks about uh, that they want it right now. But I have discovered that some things don't come right now. Some things come with time. 
I remember uh, some years ago, uh, they came out with a cake. Mm -hmm. And with this cake, they said if you take the powder, uh -huh. put it in a mug, oh, no, pour some water in it, mm -hmm. put it in the microwave, uh -huh. take two minutes, and you got chocolate cake. Let me say this, I, I, I am a trier. <laughs> I know I'm big, but I done did a whole lot of things. I done tried a whole lot of things. I even went zip line, I went higher balloon, I did all those things that I like to try. I, I wish I had some people that like to live life. That's what's wrong with some of us, amen. Amen, we, we, we so deep that we forget that we ought to live life right we here on earth. Yeah, yeah, but I, 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 I apostle, I tried this chocolate cake. Went food for less, and I put it in the microwave. I pressed two minutes, came out, looked at it. Didn't look like the box. I looked at it. It didn't look like the box. I had to look at it again and say, do I really want to try this? <laughs> and I tried the cake, and it was horrible. So I thank God for my grandmother. My grandmother is 95 years old. Oh, yeah. Still yeah. living. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I will never forget. I went to my grandmother's house. I said, I said, Grandma, I tried this cake. Put it in the microwave. It was terrible. She said, Well, all you had to do was ask me. Oh, yeah. Y'all missed that. She said, All you had to do was ask me. And I would have made you a cake. She said, but I need you to go get some ingredients from the store. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I went and got the ingredients. Uh -huh. And I literally thought that she was going to make the cake the same day. Come on now. Come on now. But she told me, she said, I can't make the cake until tomorrow because the butter has to be room temperature. You just got the butter out of the refrigerator. And the butter is too cold to mix into the batter. Y'all are missing it. So what she told me to do, she said, come back tomorrow. Look what she did. She, 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 she let the butter sit out. And I got to the house. And when she got to the house, I, I, I looked around. And what happened? She had all the ingredients sitting out. Uh, she began to mix the batter. Put the flour, uh huh. You know you got to put all the dry ingredients yeah, together. Yeah. She got the flour and she took the flour and took out a thing called a shifter. Begin to shift the flour so the flour, amen, don't have any lumps in it. Uh huh. She got the sugar. She began to get all of the ingredients together. But what happened, what made the cake perfect was that it was not in the microwave, but she had to put it in the oven. I'm almost finished. Look what happens. She has to put it in the oven. Can I tell you, in these days and time, huh, we got microwave Christian. Two minutes and we want it. Uh -huh. But do I got any oven Christians? Come on. Do I got any conventional oven Christians in here? But if I got the weight on it, if I got the weight, old school folks. Come on, come on. Amen. Pastor Jackson, she put the cake in the oven. But she said, one thing you better not do. Don't walk. Don't walk while my cake is in the oven. Because all it takes is one step and the cake will fall. Wow, you are in vision. Come on, somebody. I'm almost finished. Wow, you are in vision. Uh, uh, 
the future of your expectation. Because you already know that you're a winner. Is there anybody here know that you already won? I'm getting ready to get out of here. And I wish I talked to somebody that know that you already have won. You know why? Because over 2,000 years ago, they put my sin there, put the hot in the hill book, pierced them in the side. And what did they do? He died. Went to hell, stayed there. Friday night. Saturday. But early Sunday, he got up with all. We already won. Look at a neighbor and tell him we already won. But while you are waiting with the vision, you cannot afford to make a move. You got to wait until the vision is completed, y'all. That's my third point. I'm getting out of here. You got to wait uh, until the vision is completed. Because one step out of the will of God can cause you to fall. And that's why, as I come to my clothes, he says in Philippians, I press toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly calling of God in Christ Jesus. But what I want to look at real quickly is Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. Y'all know the story of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, amen, loved Jerusalem. Jerusalem has been torn down. But when he heard about his home, and heard how the gates of the city was destroyed. He had a desire to go back home and rebuild the city. But guess this. The Bible says because of where he was in his position, the king paid and financed the wall. Can I speak prophetically to somebody in here real quickly? God is going to give, give you people that's going to supply and provide for your vision. I, I wish somebody would receive that today. Apostle, God is going to send millionaires that say, what can I do for you that help see your vision Somebody give us a praise right there. If you believe that God is getting ready to send help, look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, God is about to send some help. People might have left you, but they're going to send help. People might have talked about you, but they're going to send help. And this time when they get some help, it's mercy on the target. And some Tobias. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Look what happened. Nehemiah mm. begins to build the wall. Yes. Sandbally and Tobias mm -hmm. tried to stop yes, what he was doing. Yes, but he had vision yes. Yes. on his mind. Yes, Lord. Touch a neighbor. Hey, oh, no, no, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. I, no. I got caught up for a minute. <laughs> look at a neighbor. <laughs> And say neighbor. I'm gonna get out of here. My time is up. I say, look at a neighbor and tell them, say neighbor. You got to have vision on your mind. Yeah. Look at somebody and say neighbor. You got to have vision on your mind. That when the devil get busy, when trials come. You got to begin to think in your mind. I'm doing the way you are. And I can't. I say, and I can't. Come down. Look at somebody. And say, neighbor. You got to understand that no matter what happens, you got to be like Paul. You got to realize. You're just making on your own. Is there anybody in here under the sound of my voice that can realize you're just making on your own? That's why I can testify if it had not been for the Lord on my side. He shared your testimony, but I
something detrimental happened in the Old Testament. It either was they felt that God cursed you or he's going to bless you. I'm, I'm doing what we're going to get ready. You know, but, but listen to this. The Bible says, the Bible says, she said, curse God and die. His friends said, I don't know what he did. They didn't want nothing to do with him. He had boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Anybody ever had a boil before? Just one boil is painful. Can you imagine boils all over? Sick. But what gives me consolation is that he had enough, he had enough knowledge, wisdom, that he prayed. Yes, yes. 42nd chapter. I'm gonna show you how God pressed the button and changes the scene. Thank you, Lord. He said, God, why me? Been faithful to you. But when you turn the page, God gives him an answer. God said, where was you when I laid the foundations of the earth? He says, where was you, Job, when I put the water in the ground? Where, where, where was you when I laid the stars in the foundation? Where, where, where was you, Job? Job could not answer. He said, Job, if I did all of that, if I did all that, he says, Job, I'm going to take care of you. Now the button ain't been pressed, but guess what happened? The Bible says, and see people always talk about Job got blessed, but people don't talk about how Job got blessed. The Bible says, his friends that talked about him got sick. That's why you got to watch who you put your mouth on. That's why the scripture says, and it's not just talking about preachers. Because, you know, people get that mixed up. They want to always use that for preachers. He's talking about his people. Touch not my anointed. And then he says, do my prophet no harm. He says, touch not my anointed. Any anointed folks in the house. The very ones that talked about him got sick. And when they went to the man of God to figure out what was going on, the man of God gave him a word and said, God said, if you want to be healed, give Job double of your portion. God turned it around for Job. His very ones that talked about him had to come bless him. Apostle, I believe this is the season. The very ones that have talked about you. Very ones that had doubted and said you ain't going to make it. They're going to have to come back and bless you. I wish I had somebody that received that word even in your life. You're going to have to come back and bless you. God turned the scene and what happened? The Bible says at the end of Job book, and Job received double. Somebody's getting ready to get a double blessing. I said, somebody's getting ready to receive a double blessing. Oh, blessing. Oh, if you believe that, come on and give God some praise. Come on. We want to do this real quick. Real quick, we want to bless this man of God. This is not tithes and offering. We want to bless this man and woman of God. Even those that are online, we want to be a blessing to them. I believe that there will come up ways that you can give. If a pastor has been a blessing to your life, how many of know seeds? How many of y'all know? You know why folks get mad about war, rain? You know why folks get mad about rain? Because they don't got no seeds in the ground. I just preached a message Wednesday that said, I'm covered. I talked about Wednesday. I'm covered in dirt. My God. 
in order for a seed to grow, it has to be covered with dirt. But what does the dirt do? The dirt crushes the seed. Then water has to be poured into the dirt to bring oxygen to the seed. But when the sun shines, the seed begins to spread roots. We're here to bless this man and woman of God. Those that can, and some of us can, I'm going to start this off with two hundred dollars. I'm going to start off with two hundred. I don't never ask anybody to do something that I won't do. I just had a meeting in my, uh, my deacon in the back. One of my deacons in the back. My secretary, that that's my other mama. She in the back. She keep getting on me. But they'll tell you, I don't do nothing at my church unless I show the example first. So, 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 I, I won't, I, 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 I believe that we can bless this man of God today. I don't know what God has put upon your heart, but at least if you can give, at least the man and the woman of God is worthy of their heart. At least if you can give them at least a hundred dollars, those that can. Those that are online. And even if you listen to this after this service has, amen, went off of live. Let's be a blessing. Let's sow a seed. Does anybody know one thing about it is that God is faithful to his word. I say the Lord is faithful to his word. He says this in his word. David says, I once was young, but now I'm old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Those that can, he said that he, I just asked him, he said he, they didn't even do, the church didn't do an assessment. But even those that are not here, let's, let's suck. Those that are not here, these members of this great church, these members of Spread the Word, let them know we ought to be a blessing to our leader. Amen. Can I say this? He went on, he went on about a whole year preaching him and Apostle Holiday, his lovely wife, preaching, trying to spread the gospel in the midst of a pandemic. Amen. He didn't even have an anniversary. I didn't even have an anniversary last year because of the pandemic. How many of y'all know that if you take care of your man and your woman of God? Yes, Lord. Let me say that again. If you take care of your man and your woman of God, yes. how many of y'all know God will take care of you? Yes. I don't live with you. My pastor, I was faithful to my pastor for 19 years. My God. The Lord took him on to be with the uh, God took him on home. Uh, he was the first pastor to die from the coronavirus mm. all over the news. Served under him all the way from the age of 17 my until God. Uh, 35. Faithful. Uh, and one thing about it, I took care of my leader. That's why I'm blessed today. Amen. Yes, Lord. Because I was faithful. Yes. Does there anybody know there's a blessing in being faithful? Yes, there is. Blessing in dedication. Yes. Those that are going to sow. It's me, you got a basket. I'm, gi I'm giving through cash out. I'm going to be giving through cash out. Huh? Excuse me. Say, Zell. Can you give to Zell? Okay, Zell, cash out. We want to be a blessing. Hallelujah. We want to be a blessing to this man, this woman of God. Some of y'all getting ready to sow into your new business. Mm, my God. Glory to God. Some of y'all getting ready to sow into your family. You need God to do something. 
Now you might say, I don't have it, but can I tell you this? You might not have a hundred, but I guarantee if you give the best seed that you can. The Bible talks about a woman. Even those that are online, listen, listen to me, those that are online. That that, that was that was a that was a story that Jesus talked about. About how the Pharisees and Sadducees, all of them got together. And the word of God says, they all began to give. And they was trying to outgive each other. But there was one woman, the word of God says. She didn't have much. The Bible says all she had was a mite. In the Bible, that means all she had was a penny. And what happened? The Bible says she walked up there, sold her penny, and they stopped and said to the woman, she gave the best because she gave all that she had. And the Bible says that God turned that penny and made her a millionaire. Yes. Because she gave all that she had. Those today, those today, you might not have what I have asked for, but those today, Give the best seed you can. And how many of y'all believe God is going to bless? Those that sowing into Apostle Regina and Jeff Holiday, come on and come. Come on and come. Those that are sowing. Hallelujah. You're sowing, come on and come. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Those that are sowing. God bless you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Major Consistently giving. 
month over month. Consistently giving. Never even reach out for anything. Never reach out. And some of them, we don't even know their information outside of their cash app name. But they, they consistently give, and we say thank you all. We say thank you for, again, your faith in God, your confidence in us. And, and we are, we're thankful today. So if you want, if you didn't want, if you did not have to give, you just want to give your tithe and offering, we have the ways to give via Cash App, which is dollar sign, all caps, STWM or by Zelle or PayPal, stwwccchi at gmail.com. But for our church members, we most we are mostly a digital church. We are mostly a digital church. That's why when pastors say, hey, do you have a basket? We're like, well, basket, what's that? <laughs> so, but, but we're thankful we have an email. Amen. But we're thankful. But cash always does spend. Checks, good checks always are good. Amen. But we thank God for your giving. We thank God for that word again on Amen. today. I receive all of that word on today. We're thankful again. As we, if, it, if there's someone who may be watching us, who may be here, you don't have a church home, and you would like spreading the word to be your church home, we open up our arms of love to you. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, we open up our arms of love to you. By proxy of him, to let you know that you are not too far gone. He still cares about you. He still loves you. He still wants you. And he's going to in no wise cast you out. So reach out to us via our email. stwwccchi at gmail.com If you're watching this on YouTube, on my YouTube page, Bishop Jeff Holiday, direct message me. If you're watching it on the Spreading the Word uh, Facebook page or my personal Facebook page, instant message us, and we will help you and pray with you, pray for you, and help you to go to your next steps in God. God will do it. He'll meet you right where you are. And so we're thankful today. Amen. We're gonna we're gonna get ready to get out of here. But again, sub, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, Spreading the Word Worship Center. Go to my wife's uh, website, ReginaHolidayMinistries.com. And we you will do it to get encouraged, built up in the most holy faith. If you want to come and worship with us physically, and you as you're coming off of off of out of the uh, pandemic and out of on and out of online church, and you want to come and worship with us, we're here at 1641 West 79th Street every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We are thankful to God. Wednesday nights we're on Facebook Live. And we are, are having Bible study on Facebook Live on the Spreading the Word Worship Center page. And then you can also uh, just, if, if you can't watch it live, it'll be on YouTube on my on my channel uh, later in that day. So uh, maybe within an hour after the service, it will be on YouTube as well. So you're, you, if you're a YouTuber, we say thank God for you. If you're a Facebooker, we say thank God for you. Wherever you are, however you get there, get there. Amen. Amen. So God bless you all one more time. Let's give God praise, everybody, for your giving. We thank God for, for this church. We thank God for the opportunity. Amen. You can take us off of Facebook Live now, if you don't mind. Amen. We thank God again for...